believe that God's word is above my attitude of thing. I believe God's word is so wide that I cannot contain it and tell it all by myself. I believe God's word is so small for even the child could understand. That's the reason why we praise and worship God because he's over all things. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long, but I do thank God for this opportunity because he has made it on this is part that found faithful in me to use this tabernacle to bring his word with life to our spirit. So I pray in the name of Jesus that we will eat the food there. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name I come ask that you will send the Holy Spirit which is our good presence, let the Holy Spirit dwell upon those who receive the bread of life, which is your word, and that they may have eternal salvation. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen. Amen. My scripture reading will be coming from Psalm 27, right. verse 1 right. through 4. Amen. That's Psalm 27, verse 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. God put upon my heart to let me know about his word. The title of this message is Knowing About the Bible. Because he do say, study yourself a proof, worthy of need not to be ashamed, right in dividing the word of truth. Amen. Amen. And he also say, faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I was possessed reading from Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes stumble and fail. Though wars may rise against me, in this I will have be confident. One thing I have desire of the Lord that He will I will seek, and that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and behold the beauty of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and doers of the Holy Word of God. Amen. Knowing about the Bible, my husband believers in Christ, we search the scriptures knowing what God had to do with us for that day. There are five things in this verse we must know to understand eternal salvation. Number one, we must know about the Bible. Number two, we must know God. Number three, we must know about the Son of God. Number four, we must know about eternal life. And number five, we must know about the Holy Ghost. Amen. Number one, 
we must go about the Bible. These things I have written unto you, those things written to us, is the word of God or the Bible. That's John 1, 5 and 13. Matthew 24 and 35 says, It is for heaven, it is for heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word shall not pass away. Why do I say that? What does the Bible say? What does it teach us? It teaches us about faith in God. So when we come before, when we come coming by hearing, when faith coming by hearing, and by hearing the word of God, says Romans 10 and 27. John 20 and 31 also say it was given so that we may know how to believe on Jesus. But those are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believers we might have eternal life through his name. Amen. Amen. One thing I do know that God's Spirit shows me every morning when I wake up, when I open my eyes, I'm alive. Amen. When I walk out door, a door, the sun and the moon is not there. I know it's there. Cause it's daylight outside. I know it's still there. That's how I know about our God. Cause this body here will dissolve, y'all from tell me. But he also can I got a new body that's waiting on me in glory. That's why we must know that we have eternal salvation. John 5 13 says that ye may believe on the Son of God before we can understand who the Son of God is. We must know who God is and a little about what God is like. What is God like? I'm glad y'all asked me that question. God is always the same. He never changed. Says right. Melchizedek 3 and 6. For I am the Lord. For I am the Lord. I never, I change not. He never changed. Regardless of what's going on in our life, God is still there. Regardless of how the family members are treated, our wives sometimes want to argue back, our kids sometimes want to be disobedient, and our husbands sometimes don't want to come home. But God is still in the house. Are you listening to me? I, just, I ain't just talking about your physical house, I'm talking about wherever you go. Because he's taking his word, he's everywhere at the same time. He can be in my in your heart at the same time. Why wow. are you listening to me? I know about the Son. I know about the Son of God, Jesus. I get excited every time I hear that name. Because every time I hear that name, it's always a song pop up my head. Oh, how I love the name of Jesus. Amen. John 4 and 14 says, 
and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Who shall ever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. We all know it. That's why God commissioned us to go out into the world. Because a whole lot of them might not know it. And a whole lot of them know it, but they still turn their back to it. That's why we, as believers in Christ, God's children, that's what we are. We must be bold when we go out. We must stand, knowing that we're standing on the ground of God's word. He say, some will receive you and some may not. But those who receive you rejoice, those who not wipe your feet off and take your feet with you, which is the word of God. Not what you think and say, man, he didn't have to do talking to that way. I'm just trying to, no, that, that ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about his word. Just walk away and say, bless God. I might can't reach it, but that fellow right there might can. God use who he will, when he will, how he will, and what his will is. Revelation. Now we go. Believe that Jesus died for you. This is three points that I'm going to drop in your spirit. Believe Jesus died for you. Believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Believe that Jesus now lives in heaven. How can I say that? I'm glad y'all asked me that question. I'm going to tell you how I can say that. Because Revelation 1 and 18 says, I am he that lived and he was dead. And behold, I'm now alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. That's, we should be giving God some glory for that. Because he woke us up this morning and started going on our way. Now, that used to be a song that said, May the Lord God bless you real good. And he does it when he wake up in the morning and starts on our way. Amen. He wakes up with a praise in our mind, a praise in our spirit to lift his name in glory. That's all he wants us to do it. He'll take care of the rest. Amen. Eternal life. What that mean? I'm going to do the best I can to tell you. Eternal life. I know this me talking now. I know I'm saved. But if, because God say so, Titus, this script, Titus 1 and 2, and hope for eternal life with God that cannot lie promise before the world begins. Are you listening to me? While he was sitting up there, this wasn't nothing down here. He looked at our arms and said, Here we is. I thank God for it. But we can't get nowhere like that. We can believe on the Son Jesus Christ. We can believe God is our creator, Jesus is our Savior. But there's one more that goes with that that we must take heed to. And that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God. Romans. 
scripture that says, Roman 5 and 5. And hope makes not ashamed, because the love of God is shared abroad among our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The Spirit of God ain't nothing like it. You can feel it. When you know you're doing your best for God, even though I will work this day 50 rags, but God comes. Yeah. 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 The Holy Spirit is always there to come to you. He's always there to give you peace, joy, love, happiness, even through your long suffering. It's there to comfort you. All you got to do is rush through the name of Jesus. Yeah. And your knees will come. Romans 8 and 16 says, The Spirit itself bear witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. The children of God. That's something to get happy. Matter of fact, that's something to be shouted about. God, this really made me happy, you know, because one day I got in the computer to type nothing up. So everything I do, I got to write it down. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. And I thank God for the spirit that calls me yes. to write down. All right. Are you listening to me? That's right, sir. Ephesians 1 and 13. In who yet also trust after that we hear the word of God. The gospel is your salvation, in whom also, after that, ye believe, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Mm. God keep being good to us. He keep promising us stuff. He keep, he never let us fall. I was at Brother Richard's shop the other day cutting this grass the other day. And everybody talking about, man, you ain't gonna get that grass cut, you're gonna fall, you're gonna faint. You're gonna fall out. I wouldn't worry about that. I'm a child of God. He said, don't throw through a booty test, but let me tell you one thing. If you love God and His Spirit dwells in you, you ain't gonna take no kind of negative talk. You can stand there and listen to it and shake your head and hear all you want to, but your spirit man is still in sin now. I got you. You my child. I got you in my hand. Regardless of what's happening, regardless of what they're saying, you just keep on listening to me and walking the way that I have you to walk. Sometimes you might not get it right. Sometimes you might be humiliated. Take it. Because that's called long suffering. Stand when you're wrong. Stand when you're right. Because God is right there. Ephesians 4 and 30 says, And grasp, grasp not. I mean, breathe, breathe, breathe not the Holy Spirit. For God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Breathe not the Holy Spirit. Man, I thank God that the Holy Spirit dwells in me. I thank God that I'm able to hear His Spirit when He speaks. I was asked the question one day, what is the difference between God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter? And I looked at the guy, because I know that God was using me 
Dr. Dillon was trying to test me to see where I was at. I told him, I said, God is the creator of everything that you see. The tree, the stars, the sky, including you. I said, Jesus Christ is your Savior who died, bled, proved for your iniquities and your sin to bring you back to God so you wouldn't die as a sinner but you would be saved in his name. And I stopped there for a little while and I just looked. He said, you left that one. The Holy Spirit, but he didn't know I was seeing what he was at. See, was he really listening? I said, the Holy Spirit is my comfort. Oh, Everything that the Word of God got to say, yes. that is the Holy Spirit. Oh, That's why he said, he that oh, has an ear, it. let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, which is the Bible. And he was stood there with his mouth open, just looking at me. He said, man, I've been watching you and watching you and watching you. I'm waiting to see you do something wrong. I said, let me tell you one thing. Nobody got it all together. I said, I, you might one day see you stumble, see you fall. But I guarantee you, I am not cast out of God's will. I shall give myself up, dress myself off, and start all over again. I just gave, I told him, I thank God, even though I may not look like much, I might look like I ain't nobody to you. I say that my life has been signed with the blood of Jesus. And And not as myself, I can continue on moving when I feel that I ain't going nowhere. Sometimes I just got to stand there, people, and just listen. No one knows what you're thinking till you open your mouth. You can stand there and say, bless you, praise God, hallelujah. And if they can't hear you, they can say what you're saying. But some try, some won't. I'm the kind that will keep my mouth shut while you talk, I still got to bless God. While you're looking at me and mad at me, I still have to bless God. I thank God for this opportunity that He has put before us this morning. I thank God for this opportunity that He has put before us this morning. I thank God for this opportunity that He has put before us this morning. I thank God for this opportunity that He has put because I'm always excited. Anytime that I have to do something for God, when I do this, I'm leaving with joy. I ain't got to jump all the time. When I'm walking around, I'm standing talking to my mother. But that's all the spirit knows. I thank God for y'all, and may God bless you in the name of Jesus.